Thank you for watching this video from Kingsway Soft. Today, I will be introducing the Postgres SQL components from within our SSAS Productivity Pack. The SSAS Productivity Pack is a collection of premium SSAS components which enable greater developer productivity and increases the power of SSIS. As of this recording, the SSIS Productivity Pack version 21.1 offers three components related to Postgres SQL. Postgres SQL Connection Manager, Postgres SQL Source Component, and Postgres SQL Destination Component. The Connection Manager Component facilitates connecting to Postgres SQL from within SSIS. Once you have a Postgres SQL Connection Manager, you can use the Postgres SQL Source Component to read or retrieve data from your Postgres SQL instance. Alternatively, you can use the Postgres SQL Destination Component to write data to your selected Postgres SQL instance. Let's take a closer look at how a particular integration with Postgres SQL can be configured, starting with the Connection Manager. The foundation of any integration package will be dependent on your Connection Manager. Both the source and destination components require the Connection Manager to be established first. Right-click on the Connection Manager area down below to add a new connection. We will select the Postgres SQL item to add this new Connection Manager. The component will require your credentials to specify the Postgres SQL instance you are connecting to, starting with the host field, which is where you can specify the host domain name or the address for the instance, alongside its port number. We have a timeout option in which you can specify the timeout in seconds to use when attempting to connect to the server. Next, we can enter our authentication details with the username of the account, which will be used to connect to the database instance, as well as the password of the provided user account. Once we have provided our credentials, the database option will display a list of databases accessible to our user accounts instance. Heading to the advanced settings page, there are possible settings for the Postgres SQL connection. When we click on a specific setting, the component will display a description for the selected property at the bottom of the advanced page. This page has six sections, general, miscellaneous, performance, pooling, security and encryption, and finally timeouts and keep alive. These are usually filled in by default. You can change them based on your specific requirement. Before we hit OK, we should test the connection to make sure our information is correct and we can connect successfully. Now let's drag the source components from the SSAS toolbox to the design surface. Double click to open its editor form. The Postgres SQL source component is used to read or retrieve data from Postgres SQL instances and produce column data, which can then be consumed by a downstream pipeline component. Let's specify our Postgres SQL connection manager. The data source drop-down menu displays a list of available data sources in the Postgres SQL instance defined in our connection manager. The command timeout option allows you to specify the number of seconds for the command timeout values. The default value is 120 seconds. The transaction type option allows you to specify the type of transactions by choosing one of two modes, implicit or explicit. When the explicit mode is selected, you can further select a transaction isolation level to specify concurrency behaviors. There are six options available, chaos, read committed, read uncommitted, repeatable read, serializable, and snapshot. By default, the Prepare Command option is enabled. Prepare Command protects against SQL injection. You can choose to disable this option for your business requirement in order to have absolute control over the values being merged into the command. The Command text box is a command text that will be executed to retrieve data from the data source. When you select a table, a basic select statement will be generated for your ease of use, which you can then further customize to your liking to perform some powerful queries. As you can see, the Command text box supports the use of user-defined and system variables. You also have the option to import SQL command from a file into the command property, as well as saving the SQL command to a file using the respective import and export buttons. Finally, there's a preview button where you will have a dialog box to show the results of executing the text in the command property space. It's important to mention the preview box will show up to the first 200 rows. If the command makes any changes to the database, the changes will appear in the preview but are rolled back immediately. Changes to the database will only commit at runtime. Let's head to the columns page where we will see a list of all available fields being retrieved. 
As an additional feature, our components include a refresh component button where the component will update to the latest metadata. This is especially useful for cases where we have created or modified any fields in PostgreSQL for the specified entity, which will otherwise require deleting and recreating the component to reflect the mapping on the columns page. Navigating to the pre and post commands page, this can be used to specify any command that needs to be run before and after the component has been executed. The pre command area will be executed before pre execute. The post command area will be executed in post execute. Now, if you do not want to execute any commands, then you can leave these fields as empty. Let's hit OK to finish configuring the Postgres SQL source component. Our example today will update Postgres SQL context to our data reader to show how the data flows from the source to destination components. We can now execute this task successfully. To demonstrate the PostgreSQL destination component, we will connect our component to an upstream pipeline component and open the editor form. Let's select a PostgreSQL connection manager. There are five actions available. Insert, where you can add records to the destination table. Update, where you can update existing records in the destination table. Upsert, where you can either update an existing record or you can insert a new record. Delete, where you can delete existing records from the destination table. And finally, you can write your own custom database command. When the custom command option is selected, a command text box and tree view will appear, which you may find familiar to our previous source components. For now, let's select the insert action. The destination table dropdown menu displays a list of available tables in the PostgreSQL instance defined in our connection manager. We also have the option to create a PostgreSQL table which will prompt the PostgreSQL table creator to auto-generate a command based on our selected connection manager and input columns to create the new table. You can further customize this command to suit your needs. And once you are completed, selecting the execute command button will complete this process. If the component was successful in creating your new table, then it will be available for selection in the table dropdown list. The command timeout option allows you to specify the number of seconds for the command timeout values. The default value is 120 seconds. You can select the type of transactions with two options available, implicit and explicit. When explicit is selected as a transaction type, we can further specify the transaction isolation level to specify concurrency behaviors. There are six options available, chaos, read committed, read uncommitted, repeatable read, serializable, and snapshot. There are three write modes from which you can select, row by row, batch, and bulk. However, it is important to mention that these three write modes may not be available for other write actions. When we change the write action to upsert, only the row by row write mode is available. We then have additional options. We can enable only update first match, so the component only performs an update on the first matching record. This is useful in order to handle multiple matches in the destination. We can also enable prevent null overwrites. This option will make sure null values are not being written to the destination. Let's change our write action back to insert to further discuss the write mode options. Generally speaking, the batch mode offers improved performance. When this mode is selected, you will be able to specify a batch size as to how many records you want to send to the target database server at a time. The default value is 100. We recommend working with the bulk write mode for the best performance overall. Let's change our write action to custom command, where we can now have a command text box to specify how the component will execute when writing data to PostgreSQL. Please be aware, however, that the columns page is not available when custom command is selected as a write mode. For our example today, we will select the insert action. Heading to the columns page, we can map the columns from upstream components to fields of the specified destination table from our general page. An important feature available on this page is our lookup feature, where the components can perform a lookup based on input values. Applicable fields will have the ability to open the virtual lookup input column by selecting the ellipsis button. The following screen will present you with the target table, which is a read-only property showing the destination table selected. The target column is a read-only property that shows the target column configured to use the lookup feature. We can select our specific lookup table from the drop-down list, it will display available tables for the database. We can select the returning column from the drop-down list 
which will display available columns for the specified lookup table. When the default value is enabled, the component will use this default value to write to the target data should the input value lookup fail. The lookup conditions can be set by working with the conditions grid that you see in the middle section. The plus and minus buttons allow you to add or remove conditions. There are logical operators like AND, OR, and so on that can be used. The input value for the lookup condition can be either an input column, a static value, or a variable. Based on the conditions chosen here, a select query will be created in the bottom pane. Let's head back to our main destination component. Navigating to the pre and post commands page, this can be used to specify any command that needs to be run before and after the component has been executed. The pre-command area will be executed before pre-execute. The post-command area will be executed in post-execute. Now we do not want to execute any commands, we can leave these fields as empty. The last page is the error handling page where we can define our error handling strategies. With the PostgreSQL destination component, we offer two outputs, default output and error output. The default output represents the records that have been passed successfully to PostgreSQL. The failed columns are directed to the error output, where there are three error handling mechanisms to choose from. The default option is to fail on error, where the entire data flow task will fail as soon as an error occurs. There is also the redirect rows to error output option, where the error output will contain the failed records with additional columns, error code, error column, and error message. The ignore error option is generally not recommended. There is also the enable columns for default output section, which you can use to enable or disable the additional columns in the destination component's default output. The affected rows option reports the number of affected rows for the SQL script executed for each incoming row. However, please be aware that this option is not available when the batch mode is used. Let's click OK to finish configuring our destination component. We can now execute this task successfully. This concludes a demonstration of the PostgreSQL components from within our SSIS Productivity Pack. There are many other components in the SSIS Productivity Pack that enable developers to accomplish more in SSIS in a much more productive fashion. Please feel free to take a look at our other videos available for viewing on our website or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video. For any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us.